I am Anil Kumar and here is a solution of question number 13, page 146 on optimization. Book is Nelson, Vectors and Calculus. I hope this will help my subscribers and students to a large extent. This question is normally seen in the test paper and it is really tough to solve it. The question here is, an isosceles trapezoid drainage gutter is to be made so that the angles A and B in the cross section ABCD are each 120 degrees. I need to sketch the diagram and then this point will be clear. If the 5 meter long sheet of metal that has to be bent to form an open topped gutter has a width of 60 centimeters, then find the dimensions so that the cross sectional area will be a maximum. Calculate maximum volume. So, what we have is uh, is a plate which is kind of 60 centimeter wide and uh, let's say it goes to 5 meter okay so when we say 5 meter it's better to write as 500 centimeters here itself 500 centimeters right so that's the width so what we have done here is that we are folding the ends so that we make a isosceles trapezoid drainage my purpose of sketching along with the solution is so that you understand what is the basic concept. So this total length or you can say the width has to be folded to form isosceles trapezoid drainage gutter. This is the idea. So what we will do, isosceles means uh, it has to be same uh, sides on the end. So let's mark two points and these two points are A and B for us and then we are, we are going to bend it we are going to bend it at an angle of 120 degrees that means 90 plus 30 right so so we get something like this 90 plus 30 right so so when you bend this portion upwards you kind of make like this right so it is important when you are working on such question it's open end so this line is just showing the boundary but it's open end so so what I've done at this stage this 60 centimeter plate width has been bent at an angle of 90 plus 30 right 90 plus 30 is 120 right so that is how it has to be bent and we we'll label this as a b c d right so c d is open top trough right isosceles means that these two sides are equal that is what it means right now the total length is 60 that means AB plus DC plus CB is 60. Let us say this is Y for us, this dimension is X for us. In that case you know 2X plus Y is equals to 60 and from here we can write that Y is equals to 60 minus 2X. So what we will do is we will define variables and relate them with one variable x now what is area of trapezoid area is sum of these two sides times height divided by 2 so height let it be h let us relate height also with x so height could be written as equals to uh, x times because this is 30 degrees let me write 30 degrees here this is 30 this is cosine of this right so it is x times cos of 30 degrees correct now what is cos of 30 degrees cos of 30 degrees square root 3 over 2 so you could write this as equal to square root 3 over 2 x so that is height h now to find this length we need to add y so we know this is y for us these two sides are equal since it is isosceles and each side uh, let me call these points as uh, E and F. Okay. So if these points are E and F, then DE should be equals to, it is opposite of 30 degrees. So DE is, is, is X sine 30, X sine 30 degrees. 30 degrees is uh, half, so you could say it is half of X. So half of X, half of X will get added to Y or you can say x plus y is dc, right? So we have dc as x plus y, right? So, 
So we could write dc as x plus y. You get the idea since uh, what we found here was that this is equal to half of x. Same, right? So this is half of x and that is y. So half of x, half of x is x, x plus y is this length. Perfect. Now once we get all this, you'll realize uh, we got all the parameters in terms of uh, in terms of x, right? Now, uh, so dc is x. Now what is the area? The formula for area is half of dc plus ab times height. That is the formula for us, correct? Now we know this formula in terms of all just in terms of x so we can now write all these terms in terms of x and then continue right so, so that's what we will do so let's say area you have to get everything in one variable that is the most critical part and then find derivative equate to zero half of dc which is x plus y right so we'll write x plus y plus a b which is y plus h which is square root 3 over 2 x so that is what we have so if you open this bracket then what do you get this is 2y right and we'll multiply by square root 3 over 2 so what we get here is square root 3 over when you multiply with x over 4x square this is the first term 2y when you multiply by half becomes y and so it could be written as plus uh, square root 3 over 2x times y right so x times y and y I am going to write as 60 minus 2x is that okay so let me do y first so we have just opened the bracket right so it is 2y divided by 2 is y and multiply by square root 3 over 2x perfect so still we have y as a variable which we are going to write in terms of x. So we have square root 3 over 4x square plus square root 3 over 2x times y is 60 minus 2x. Perfect. So now you can see the variable is just x. Now it is easy to solve. So that was the tricky part. So let's open this bracket. So half of 60 is 30. So I could write this as 30 square root 3x. And here if I do half of 2 it is x, right? So it is square root minus uh, square root 3x. Okay, square root 3x. So that is what you get as an expression for a, right? So, uh, okay, sorry, x and x will be x squared. So it will get x squared x times x so that is what you get here now we can find the derivative of this expression so derivative is a dash with respect to x we are doing derivative so you get square root 3 over 4 times 2x which I could write as square root 3 over 2x right plus derivative of this is 30 square root 3 minus 2 times square root 3 x right so so that is what we get since maximum is possible when the derivative is zero right? that is the algorithm or at the end points right so the maximum is possible at the end point so let us see what could be the value of x so as far as x is concerned it is greater than or equal to zero and is less than or equals to 60, I mean in this case because x is kind of half right you are going to bend it so it is less than equals to 30 correct so these are the limits for for x right now if I so I have to find the area at these points if I write 0 here in that case uh, we can find the area if I write 0 y will be 60 do you see that and if I write x as 30, y is going to be 0 and x is going to be 30. So we can substitute those values and find area A, correct? Now, when we, when we say that we are expecting maximum area, we equate this to 0 
and solve for x from this particular equation. Is that okay? So, so that is what it is. Square root 3 over 2x plus 30 square root 3 equals to 0. So, we have, we can combine these terms and uh, then solve for x. So, we have square root 3 over 2x minus 2 square root 3. Uh, okay, so we can take, uh, okay, we'll do two steps. Square root 3 x plus 30 square root 3, right? So, we'll solve this equation on the right side. Okay. Equating it to 0, that means we can take these terms to the left side, multiply everything by 2. So, we have, we can divide by square root 3 to simplify since that get cancelled. Is that okay? So, what remains is and taking this, we got 2x minus half x. Is that okay? Taking these two terms to the left equals to 30. Is that option clear? So, what we have done is we have combined these two terms, right? So, and we have taken them to the left side. We have taken to the left side. So, we get 2x and we have divided everything by square root 3. This is how we simplify it, right? Now, this gives us 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so it is 3 over 2x is equals to 30. So you can solve for x, x is equals to 30 times 2 over 3, which is equal to 20, right? So x is 20 for us, correct? So x is 20. Since we know that y is 60 minus 2x, so y is equals to 60 minus 2 times 20, 2 times 20, which is 40, so which is 20, right? So 60 minus 40 is 20, so that is 20, 20 centimeters. So we got the answer for the first one, that is find the dimensions so that the cross-sectional area will be a maximum, right? So I like you to calculate the maximum area and volume also. So, what we have now is the dimensions. So, the dimensions are that these sides are all 20 each, right? So, so it is dA, so it is 20 by centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, right? So, that is the dimension for this trough, right? So, 20 is dA, AB is 20, BC is also 20. Now to find the area and to show that this is the maximum area, what you need to do is you substitute 20 here and then calculate, correct? So let us do it right here. Since I am running out of space, I will just do calculations here. So it is half of, if I write 20, 20 and 20, I get 60 here, right? 60 square root of 3 over 2 times 20, right? So, that is what I get. And I'll use calculator to calculate this answer, right? So, so let's find the answer. You know, half of 60 is 30. And then, so we say, well, we say 30, half of 60 times 20 divided by 2 again, divided by 2. And then we can multiply this by square root 3. Square root 3 equals to, so we get 519. Now that is the area, right? So 519 is the area. This is 19 centimeters square. But we need to find volume. So volume will be how much? Volume will be equals to area into length, right? So area into length, area into length. So that will be. 500 and whatever we get into 500. You get the idea? So, that much is the area in centimeter cube, okay? So, that be 519.6 it is, whatever. So, we'll multiply this by 500. And then it gives us an answer, which is 259807 uh, centimeter cube, right? So, that is the volume that is a part b for you okay i hope that's absolutely clear you could also write it in the exact values which is better to do actually so if you divide this by 2 you get 10 
30 so 300 square root 3 so volume will be 300 square root 3 times 500 right so 500 centimeter cube so that is a better way of doing it okay to show that this is the maximum area what you also need to do we found the area using the number 20 you find what is area for 0 what is area for 30 right calculate these two values and then compare with this value which one is maximum so you'll find that these values are much lesser as compared to this one correct in fact if you write 0 here for x the area will be 0 and if you write so that is indeed 0 so sometimes when you do optimization problems with boundary conditions it happens you get such values correct and uh, here if you write 30 in that case you know y is 0 right so because that y is 0 so if y is 0 we get x square you can calculate that value so x square is 300 uh, divided by 4 so you get a much smaller value is that okay so that is one fourth of this value so those values are much smaller therefore the maximum is for the given dimensions so that is how it should be done I hope the steps are absolutely clear go through them once again and uh, try to do it on your own thank you and all the best